PPI Sports has always been a massive supporter of natural bodybuilding, so it only made sense for us and them to partner up. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by BPI Sports, and if you want to support them and us, use code NattyNewsDaily at checkout for some exclusive discounts off any of your orders. Enjoy the episode. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. As you can see, Leroy skipped out on us again. He's enjoying not being a bodybuilder for a little bit. So Dan and I are here to welcome Gary Amlinger. And if you're not familiar with him, you will be, hopefully uh, by watching Worlds this year, that's WMBF Worlds, where he will be probably placing pretty high, or at least that's what we're banking on, because we are actually formally creating a relationship with our first sponsored athlete for the 90 News Daily podcast. So we will be kind of helping Gary along with his prep uh, through media presence, marketing, promotion, but as well as kind of covering some of the finances which will obviously grow as our podcast grows. So this is a, a great opportunity for us because this is something we've always wanted to do. We talk about, we want to get back to the sport. We want to give back. Well, covering people is one thing, but actually financially supporting is another because we know there is not a lot of money in this sport. So this is our first step in doing that. And we chose Gary because this guy is a beast. If you do not follow him, please do. And you will be amazed and just very passionate about the sport. Very great guy. And we're just excited to be working with him. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Gary, for a little introduction on yourself. And then let's dive right into it. Awesome. No, thank you so much. So my name is Gary Amlinger. I am a personal trainer and physique coach out of Long Island, New York. I've been bodybuilding since about 15 years old. My first competition was at 19 in the teenage division at the Hercules, INBF which actually just recently I judged for the first time. Um, from there, I took second and actually took a really long time in between my next competition season. So at 32 years old was my next competition. Uh, I ended up turning pro at the Northeast America in New Jersey. That's INBF, WNBF. And about a month later, I took second of 12 at the WNBF Pro American, which qualified me for Worlds. Yeah. So a high pedigree there at the very least is what we could say. Yeah. So, I mean, that period of time between 19 and 32, I kind of, I took a hiatus in a way I was still bodybuilding, but it was more of trying different things out. You know, I tried fitness modeling for a while, did some commercial acting, uh, did a little bit of boxing, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, basically trying different sports, seeing if bodybuilding was the thing that I really wanted to move forward with my life with and about 26 years old it was like okay so what are we doing here we tried all these different things what do i like the most and bodybuilding is a resounding you know number one it's it's not even close even when i was doing all these other sports i enjoyed it but the passion for bodybuilding was always there i mean i i was bodybuilding while um doing bjj and boxing and all these other things so i never fully let it go but from a competitive standpoint, I did. So at 26, I decided that's it. I'm just going to kind of ditch everything else. And we're going to go with natural bodybuilding from here on out. And at that time, I hired Jason Tremblay with the Strength Guys, who also coaches Taylor Atwood. If any of you guys know uh, drug-tested powerlifting, he's the world champion again this year, I believe, multiple times. So he took me under his wing. And from 26 on till now, I'm 35 years old, he's been leading the way along with cliff wilson doing my nutrition so you said that you you really found that bodybuilding was was n not just your your favorite of the activities and sports that you were taking part in but far and away um when you say that what set it apart was it you know is it the training that you're attracted to is it the competing you're attracted to is it the 24-hour commitment always on the clock thing or why don't you I'd love to read it. Yeah. So yeah. there's definitely a lot of angles to bodybuilding that I love. One thing is for sure. When I started lifting weights in my little home gym, when I was in my teens, mid teens, uh, there was like a spark right away. I was like, there's something about the pump and the engagement of the muscles and the exercises that I just, it felt right. It just felt right. Uh, I love the feeling after training so right away, I knew that there was something there. Um, also, natural bodybuilding definitely didn't have as much of a career path uh, in my early 20s, and especially at 19. So I was like, 
am I going to be able to make a career out of this? That's another aspect that I was questioning. So I didn't think that it was possible at the time, which is another reason why I veered off into those different paths that I told you guys about to kind of see, okay, maybe I can make a career doing something else and I'll just bodybuild on the side. But um, in terms of what I love most about bodybuilding, it's the process and especially drug-free bodybuilding. I enjoy how hard it is to build muscle. I don't like things to come easy. I have never been that way. Actually, I'd like to suffer for my results. I'm not into quick fixes, instant gratification. So if, you, if you're that way, like I am, drug-free bodybuilding is perfect because it takes forever to grow a physique, mm -hmm. especially if you have average or even a little bit above average genetics. It's still going to take you a very long time. So that really, I would say that's the number one thing for sure. Would you say that, and now I've seen like that in my own kind of, not necessarily the bodybuilding career, but I've jumped around a couple of different times with other recreational sports, like picking up rugby in the past couple of years, because I felt like I wanted a new challenge, right? I didn't go back to soccer, which I played in college, because I've done that. I've played at a high level. Would you say that that was one of the reasons why, because you named multiple different sports. It's not like you, all right, I'm not going to do natural bodybuilding at the age of 20. I'm going to do boxing and you stuck with boxing for seven years. You named multiple different things in there. Do you find that it was, you were seeking a, a challenge that whole time? Seeking a challenge from those sports? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to find something that challenged you in the way that natural bodybuilding did. I was trying to, that, yeah, that was definitely one of the goals to see if anything could uh, match up with bodybuilding's challenge. Yes. Also, like I said, I wanted to see if I really loved bodybuilding as much as I thought I did. So I wanted to try all these different things and make sure that I actually loved it as much as I thought I did. And that's why I tried all those you know, sports I told you about, but nothing ever caught me. It was fun. That's about it. This is a different deeper feeling that I get from bodybuilding that I didn't get from those sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and like Dan hinted, like it's, it's 24 seven, it's all encompassing if done at a high level or if done in a competitive nature, right? Because the argument could be made that lots of people are bodybuilders, but competitive, specifically competitive natural bodybuilding. I mean, there's everything matters, everything you're doing on the weekend and the night. And, you know, Dan right now with his blue light blockers on, which we all tease each other about, but like all the little things that some of these other athletes, um, at least until they're at the highest of levels, don't really consider or as much as what we have to do just to get the results, like we said, because it is so slow. That's a great point. And one of the other things that comes easy for me is this being 24 seven sticking to a diet, sticking to a training routine, make sure you get your sleep. Don't do, go too crazy on the weekends. That comes natural for me. I like rigidity. I like routine. So with bodybuilding that lines up perfectly, other sports, to be honest, you can get away with doing a little more partying, not being so good on your diet or your training. Um, MMA comes to mind. B BJJ is a bit like that. A lot of these guys don't really look at their diet. Um, that's a very technical sport. So if you're very good technically, you're going to excel at something like even boxing and especially BJJ. But for bodybuilding, this is body composition. That's exactly what we do. The more muscle we have, the less fat we have, the better we do. And that's all manipulated by training and nutrition. You can't skimp out on that. So a lot of people who would go toward like maybe a combat sport because they know that they don't have to stick to a rigid diet 24 seven. And that makes them feel good. That wouldn't make me feel good. I like to stick to, you know, routines like that. So that's just another reason why. Yeah, absolutely. Do you find there's something about like having purpose and like when you're eating, you're eating a meal, you're not just eating to eat, you're eating with a purpose, like this has a purpose, that has a purpose, you know, is that something you found as well? I get the sense it might be. Yeah, I mean, everything I do throughout my day is purposefully done for bodybuilding, really. So it's fun for me to set up my meals it's fun for me to like allocate like certain grams of protein, carbs, and fat for different parts of the day. Cause I know, like you said, it's going toward my ultimate goal is to be the best I possibly could be at bodybuilding. So that, that those little goals throughout the day, actually, I feel is very healthy 
for me and probably for most people. It's like accomplishing little goals every day makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. It's like you're working hard throughout the day. You're accomplishing these things and it makes you feel good. And you wake up the next day and you do it again. You have a goal, you have an aim. I feel like a lot of people might not have like clear cut goals and an aim and they're wandering and they're not very in tune and like in their life. They're kind of just like floating around. But for me, I know exactly what I have to do every day and I execute it. So I connect uh, with that very, very well. <laughs> yeah. Jay James, sure. you do that. <laughs> oh yeah. There's not a wasted moment in your day, Dan. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not that perfect, but yeah, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we talked about the competitive, uh, the early competitive season. We jumped all the way up to 2018 where you last competed. You said you turned pro, you got the second place in the pro show, which qualified you. So where does that leave you now? What's What are things looking like from 2018 up until 2022? So it's been just hyper-focused on becoming the best bodybuilder I could be, especially for WNBF Worlds. That's the number one goal I have uh, to date. So from 2018, when I stepped off stage and uh, Nancy Andrews from the WNBF spoke to me and told me exactly what I need to work on, which was match my upper body to my lower body because my lower body is very dominant and get my back and shoulders thicker and wider. So those two things like ring in my ear now, like when I'm training throughout the day, that's, that was the number one goal. So four years later, uh, I prioritized back shoulders and Jason and I felt like hamstrings was probably the third weakest part on me. So those are and are still the priority and were for four years. So volume was allocated heavily towards those muscle groups. And yeah, I've been staying in a surplus as long as I possibly can throughout the four years. I only mini cut when I feel like my body's just hitting that limit where I just don't feel good anymore at that at a certain weight. And in the off season, I would say around 225, high 225s, that's when I start to kind of lose good leverages in the gym. I start to feel lethargic. So that's when I mini cut. But that's really the only time I was mini cutting is when I'm hitting those high body fats or high body weight percentages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people can kind of relate to that as well, right? We always want to push, push, push the weight but there's definitely a point at which it's no longer beneficial, right? Like your strength isn't just going to keep getting better because you added another five pounds. The leverages can only improve so much. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like a lot of us can, can hone in on that. We all have that one body weight that is just no longer beneficial anymore. I think at a certain point, your body is just at a certain level of body fat. It's just so stressful on your body that your body can't deal with training stress very well at, at anymore so it's like you know it's allocating its its resources towards the stress of being too heavy and being too fat that it you know you can't recover as well and can't you know grow muscle as well i i think i think that's kind of where why it kind of caps off at a certain point mm -hmm. yeah i, I so, agree with that yep when, when you're mini cutting down so you said your peak was like 220 225 how lean were you getting and then how fast a time are you doing that so that you could get back to growing? So mini cuts last, it's still a mini cut. It's longer than most people mini cut. I would say two to three months and I would get down to like 210, I would say. Okay. Yeah. By the way, just another note, I actually hit 270 pounds at some point. This was before my 2018 season. And this was when actually my sleep was real bad and clearly my nutrition was way out of whack, but I pushed a bulk as long as I possibly could clearly. And that was my limit, but my limit really was exceeded. Let's be honest. 270 <laughs> is ridiculous. I'm five, nine, but um, I have pictures. I should have pictures. I would IG. Photos of that. Yeah. I should yeah. have a couple. Um, I, I, I was training out of MVP fitness and hot bogs. So the people at that gym saw quite a transformation once I went up to 270 and then back down to like 210 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And um, let me tell you, don't get that heavy. 
in the off season. It is not fun. I was eating all kinds of awesome food, but my sleep was getting worse because my body fat was way too high and energy levels dropped. Leverages were just bad, but that's one mistake that I, I definitely learned from. So 225 is my limit now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, I can't even fathom a 270 pound, five foot nine dude, like it's, in yeah. good shape, right? Like not like you were shredded, but like you're also not just obese either. Like that's got to be, we got to dig up some of those photos. Yeah. We got to share those. We'll get them out there for sure. We'll get them (laughs) out there. That would be a transformation to see all the way from 270 to your stage weight of, uh, you know, so, so what is the stage weight uh, normally? So, so 2018 was 192. We're projecting that I added about six ish pounds of muscle in the past four years, possibly more. Um, we're not, we're only going to be able to tell once I get very lean again. So we'll see, but this time around, I'm going to get even leaner than last time. So let's say maybe 195 to 198. We're looking to step on stage this year and it's going to look completely different than what I did in 2018. Which was already very, very impressive. Right. And if, if you're a fan of natural bodybuilding and you're hearing these numbers, like alarms should be sounding in your head, right? Like 190 plus pound guy. And Gary's not messing around with conditioning either. Like he's, you know, That's insane. does well for himself and is coached by Cliff. If that tells you anything about like conditioning levels, right? Like that's, that's nutty. <laughs> I'm trying to push 200 at five, nine and it's, it's challenging <laughs> like to get up there. And that's like, yeah, close to your contest weight. That's, that's, that's nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we yeah. are all very excited for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Cliff. I mean, you mentioned Cliff. He's, it's almost like he's not human, the amount of work he does and how personable he is and how quick he gets back to my emails and how knowledgeable I have just the best things to say about Cliff Wilson. If anyone wants to check him out on Instagram, I recommend you do so because he's unbelievable for competition prep. He does my nutrition. Like I said, Jason Tremblay with the strength guys, he's been doing my training for like eight years, but we're definitely going to hit better conditioning this year. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that, seeing what muscle I could uncover. Yeah. That'd be one to watch. That's exciting. Um, so is now remind us is WMBF worlds the only show you're doing this year, or do you have a lineup coming up? So WMBF worlds should be 18th to the 19th of November. I'm looking at November 5th to the 7th, which is the WMBF monster mash. I originally, I was just going to do those two competitions, but now I'm seeing that there's a competition in Seattle, Washington, which is a WNBF pro competition. That should be October 15th. So it's not too far away from mm-hmm. Worlds because Worlds, that's where I want to peak, obviously. Yeah. That, that's the number one. So Cliff seems to think that if I do the October competition, I won't affect my peaking for Worlds then I'm like, well, this, that's a strong possibility then. So it could be those three. And I know I talked to a few people at the Hercules um, this past weekend and they're like, oh, you got to do the, the universe, which is in September, but that's tracking maybe too far back away from worlds. I would love to do the universe because who wouldn't want a gun for, you know, WNBF, Mr. Universe. I'd hundred percent would like to do that, but that's definitely tentative. I'm not, I'm not positive on that one. Okay. And it seems like if anyone's listening, all of these shows are IMBF, WMBF, right? So no real aspirations to compete across organizations, go after like IP worlds, like some other competitors have done anything like that. Mr. America. Yeah. There's so many amazing um, drug-free bodybuilding competitions and organizations now and, and world championships with amazing competitors. I would like to, but right now I really would, I want to stick with the WMBF. I've been with them since I'm 19. I definitely have an affinity for them and I see what they're doing. You know, I've talked to Bob and Tina Bell, who, the, who is the uh, president and vice president of the WMBF. And they're just amazing people. Everyone in the organization that I've met so far has been amazing. So I believe they're now in 40 different countries. They're really like moving very strongly in uh, the drug-free bodybuilding space and I believe in them. I believe in their purpose and I'm going to stick with the WMBF. Yeah. There we go. There we go. It's a strong statement, right? Uh, especially like you said, right. There's, 
we talked about there's no fi well there's not no finances just the finances aren't strong enough normally to sway an athlete to go towards one organization or the other so it's really about the integrity of the organization and how you're treated as an athlete so yeah i think that's a that's a strong statement for them for sure hearing that coming from you yeah and also another thing to another testament to just drug-free bodybuilding and its community we don't have much money to go around especially with prize money you're talking about world championships you're not even going to make that much money at all so what that tells me is the people that are in this it is for the passion and the love and that's why everyone in the community is awesome because there's no ulterior motives there's really no financial motives as of right now and i believe that will change in the coming years and i hope that it doesn't attract the wrong kind of people to our sport because the reason one of the reasons i am in this sport too is the community Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like one of a kind. You're not going to find many sports in this position with the athletes and the coaches and the promoters and, and the level of integrity people have. So definitely, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll say in goal, WMBF Worlds, place pretty highly. Don't want to jinx anything. Don't want to say any numbers or anything like that. What's, what's the future looking like after that? Are you going to jump back into another prolonged off season, right? Because this last one was from 2018 to 22, or are you going to try and repeat, come back the next year with some refinements? What's, what's your game plan look like? So my first thought is I want to take four to five years off right away. Mm -hmm. That's my first thought. I believe that champions are really made in the off season. I can def like as muscle gain really slows down, which, you know, this is like very individual uh, and genetics play a big role. I would say somewhere in your 40s, they're going to slow down. I don't know where. For me, it's going to be different than you, you different than Doug Miller, Doug Miller, to, you know, Valentine Azuga and so on. So we'll see. But I'd really like to just take as long as possible and um, build as much muscle as I can, because that's the name of the game. This is bodybuilding. Uh, as they say, it's not body leaning. So it's important to have muscle mass because you see some of these guys on stage, they look like they should be in the IFBB. The sport isn't playing around anymore. There's like very, very hardworking, intelligent and genetically gifted people in our sport now. So if, you, if you're not bringing the muscle, you should rethink, you know, your off season competition season ratio for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a trend that, a lot of the very successful bodybuilders are doing and that's not a slight on anyone that doesn't do that right like but just me thinking off the top of my head of people we've interviewed people that we've seen even on the younger side of the generation but like you alberto nunez josh kenyon eddie saldana these are all guys Jay that have said like comes to mind too yeah Jay yeah. Brew. these are all guys that have said like i don't i don't have that urge to jump right back on stage like i feel like i need to stay off stage and like certain people are like trying to beg them to come back and compete and they're like no i'm not ready i'm not ready meanwhile these guys and yourself look remarkable right and could be very competitive at any show they jump into but the standard that you place on yourself is just so high that for you you have to reach you know this this intangible almost amount of improvement before you're deemed ready by yourself mm -hmm. 100 percent and the younger guys, you know, this is a, a marathon sport. So if you do this correctly, for the most part, we're all going to make mistakes. God knows I've made so many, but you can really do this till your forties, fifties. So what's the rush like that at like later on in life, you're going to have trouble adding muscle as opposed to when you're 19, 29. So mm -hmm. take the time earlier to add that size and don't compete too often and then once you get to that place where muscle gain slows down, now you can start adding in maybe, you know, competing once every year or two years. But in the beginning, I feel like it's just a caloric surplus is king. Mm -hmm. Love it. I love it. Any, uh, I think that's a great place to kind of wrap things up, right? That's a, a piece of wisdom for all the younger generations or even, you know, people of our generation, because there is a, a tendency right now because they think of social media to want to be lean more often. Um, Dan, any closing thoughts kind of jumping off of that? Nothing that particularly comes to mind. I've, I've most have been listening to the wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, I think this has been a great episode for, you know, a lot of different people. We've talked a lot of different topics, hopefully introduced a new generation of people to you, Gary. 
Um, so for those that have not uh, followed you or don't know about your journey so far, where can they find you and where can they contact you? Yeah, so uh, Instagram is just at Gary Amlinger. That's the main social media outlet I use. Facebook, just type in my name, Gary Amlinger, and same with YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's just just throw my name in Google and I'm just going to come up. Nice. And you said you currently train people in person out of Long Island, right? Or is it all virtual right now for you? So I do train people in person out of a physical therapy studio, which is also has a full gym, which is amazing. It's called mm -hmm. Body in Balance in Hop Hog, New York. So I train my one-on-one -on -one clients there. And I also have one-on-one -on -one clients in their home gym. So I have a few of those as well. And I am doing physique coaching and posing coaching online. So I've prepped competitors before. You could check out my Instagram and see their results. So I'm leaning more toward moving in that direction with uh, bodybuilding coaching. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And obviously we'll be covering your, your posts, your updates, all that on not only our Instagram, but for those that don't know and haven't seen the post, we will be opening up a forum or have opened up a forum that's open question and answer for Gary. So anything that you want to ask him that we haven't covered in this episode, uh, jump on the website, nattynewsdaily.com, go to the forum, ask Gary your questions there, and he will be updating us uh, via blog as well, weekly on the website. And then we'll be doing a running series with him here on YouTube and on the podcast, just staying updated as he runs for that world's title potentially we're very excited to be along for the ride with you gary yeah I'm, I, this is going to be a great partnership i love all your energy you guys are great we all have the same thing in mind we want our sport to grow even above you know ourselves growing which is very important and i think uh this is going to be a really good ride so everybody definitely follow them uh for all natural bodybuilding news it's going to be good all right. All right. We appreciate it. So that wraps up another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. If you haven't already, give us a like, share, subscribe, join the member site, which is now free, right? So there's literally no financial barrier. Join the community there. We're trying to grow it and create and grow uh, the sport that we all love. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Appreciate it. You too.